always get that little extra ring in there. <laughs> good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to see everybody out this morning. Thank you. Thank you for gathering in the church in the church house. Let's, uh, let's all stand for prayer and then we'll pledge allegiance to the nation's flag. <clears throat> Father, we do thank you for the privilege that you have provided for us together here this morning. For you have promised that where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. We understand and realize that we are the church. But we've gathered this morning the church in the church house. Wherever we are, we are the church. And that's not because of who and what we are. It's because of who and what you are. We thank you for the grace and the mercy and the peace and the provisions that you continuously pour out on us. These are things, Father, that we neither earn nor do we deserve. As we gather this morning, we pray that your will be done, that you would enable us to continue to grow in grace, to continue to plant deep spiritual roots, to continue to uh, mature and grow in grace and grow toward spiritual maturity. For all of this, Father, we ask in the powerful, matchless name of our Lord, our Savior, and our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, that he might be honored and glorified. And all of us together say, Amen. 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 <clears throat> I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the, of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. you may be seated. Well, you uh, would like to tickle the ivories, would you? <laughs> well... Let's look at uh, In the Garden. I think it's 12. In the blue book? Yes, sir. Thank you. 
you did a fine job. Thank you. You hit all 900 keys. <laughs> and now she's going to hit you. <laughs> The Word of God is alive and powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God might be fully equipped unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We're going to be looking at several different passages this morning, but I want us first of all to I want to share some information with you and for you. Uh, there's an awful lot as we, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago, I think about this so-called Black Lives Matter movement. Uh, I think we need to get right to the core of this thing. This organization is nothing short of satanic, socialist, and communist backed. Now, I have some, some other information I want to share with you to, to verify what I'm saying. Uh, Trying to see that with my, my glasses. And all right, there are three reasons Black Lives Matter is not uh, in, is not compatible with biblical Christianity. Three reasons, and these are the three reasons. One, earlier this morning we we discussed the fact that. Uh, there are three reasons Black Lives Matter uh, movement is not is incompatible with biblical Christianity. I want to share those three reasons with you, if I may, in addition to some additional information that pertains to the organization itself. Um, the first reason. <clears throat> Black Lives Matter seeks to dismantle the biblical definition of family. Reading under that. In their own words, they are committed to disrupting the Western prescribed nuclear family structure required requirement. One man married to one woman is not a Western prescription for family. It is a biblical one. The mystery of two man and woman becoming one flesh is so powerful, so powerful a union that the Apostle Paul used this uh, illustration to talk about Christ and his church in Ephesians chapter 5. That's reason number one. Reason number two, Black Lives Matter champions the celebration of homosexuality. They refer to it as queen, af queen affirming but it simply boils down to rebellion against God's created design for sexuality. <clears throat> In their own words, Black Lives Matter gathers with the intention of freeing ourselves from the tight grip of heteronormality thinking or rather the belief that all in the world are heterosexual unless uh, they disclose otherwise. 
No matter what the sexual culture decides about sexuality, the Bible, the inerrant, immutable Word of God, is still unequivocally regarding God's design for sexual Im uh, intimacy. Romans chapter 1, for example, lists homosexuality as a vile passion. It also, God refers to homosexuality as an abomination. How now can we link ourselves with individuals whose mission is to undermine and celebrate rebellion against God's design? Reason number three, Black Lives Matter totes gender confusion as normal and seeks to make heroes of those who are mentally confused. The movement, uh, the movement taking culture by storm and increasingly uh, violated, uh, violated by, uh, by Christians, black and white, black and white alike, wants to dismantle gender privilege and uplift um, uplift the the gender revolution. The justice movement is also the movement of gender revolution. Black Lives Matter is committed to celebrating the making space for transcendent brothers and sisters who participate to participate and lead gender confusion. There are two genders, male and female. The science is clear, the Bible is crystal clear. When it comes to God's design, God's creation, quote, Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. The image of God is the Imago Dei. Gender confusion is an attack of Satan to mar the Imago Dei. Black Lives Matter is complicit in this destruction. <clears throat> Aside from its decisive nature, Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter calls for violence and holds and an insatiable desire for lawlessness. So Christians have deep spiritual reason to resist, resist aligning with the movement, movement, its founders and their core convictions. Just a few of uh, the movement's guiding principles, just a few should provide plenty of evidence to believers that aligning with such an ungodly ideology is at least troubling and at most diabolical. Christians can and should stand up against injustice, but we should absolutely refuse to stand behind a movement that vehemently opposes God and his righteous stands. There is absolutely no room for debate. I believe that they are equal to the movement's well-televised justice work. These issues, however, could never garner the support and traction completely enjoyed by the movement if 
they were widely known. So, Black Lives Matter benefits from two epidemics in our culture. Two. Ignorance and apathy. We have no choice. We must keep ourselves informed. And we must be apprised and advised of those things that would seek to destroy the things that make our nation what it is. And we as the body of Christ, the organism, not the organization, must take a stand. And our stand is in the inerrant, immutable word of the sovereign God that we serve. The leadership of the organization uh, and their anti-biblical beliefs The program itself, the three individuals that organized, there are three of the three women, two of the three are practicing homosexuals. The, there is a definite connection between Marxism, witchcraft, and uh, uh, the, the uh, occults. These individuals are involved in, in uh, what we refer to as the underworld, the darkness, the dark side. The third reason is uh, that these individuals are anti-American, they're anti-Christ, they're anti-Christian. And their objective by being uh, connected to socialism and communism, they're also an integral part of Antifa. And Antifa is also communist and socialistic backed. These individuals are, their objective is regardless of what it takes, the ultimate destruction of everything we hold dear as a nation. Um, so what we see as far as anarchy, chaos, and riots, etc., these things are absolute intentional. These things are designed to destroy everything that this nation was built on contrary to the, to the Judeo-Christian heritage that uh, is the foundation of our nation. These, organi these organizations at some point in time will encounter the wrath of the sovereign God that we serve. Uh, it's not if, it's when. And it probably will be a lot sooner than we realize. There are multitudes of, of individuals and organizations that are bent on doing the same thing. There is an organization that will be meeting in June called the, the World Economic Forum. If you go on, on the internet under WE Forum, I think it's .org, it may be .com, but it's WE Forum. You will see their uh, agenda you will see what, what they are aspiring. The whole thing boils down to the fact that this will be the gathering of some of the most wealthy individuals in the world. And their objective is to tear down capitalism, to, to form a one world government with one single monetary system and one global religion. So what are we looking at? We're looking at the foundation being laid for the approach of the Antichrist. And that's where this is going. Will the church be here? I don't think so. I feel the rapture is imminent. We could be raptured in the midst of our service right here this morning. But these are things that I want you to be made aware of because I, I can almost guarantee you that seven out of ten Christians don't know anything about these people. And these people are hostile. These people are demonic, and they're satanically influenced. Now, do we fight against uh, flesh and blood? Not according to Ephesians chapter 6. We fight, we wrestle, we battle. It, it's, it's, a, it's an angelic conflict, and it's, we are waging war as the body of Christ against uh, the spiritual realm. The angelic conflict goes on continuously. 
and it is uh, Satan's objective is to destroy everything, everything in any way, shape, or form that has anything to do with God. The objective is to destroy the church, not the organization, the organism, the bride of Christ. And that's who we are. The church is being persecuted even as we speak. Uh, we didn't watch much of the either one of the uh, uh, conventions on the TV, but we we uh, we watched more of the the one than we did the other. But the one I'm making reference to is on at least two or three occasions, according to what I'm, what we've been told. The Socialist uh, Communist Democratic Party did not include in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag one nation under God. That should tell you something. That should make us totally aware of where this organization, this political party is going. We are one nation under God. And if we get to the point where we, can, we forget that, as Reagan said, we'd be a nation going under. And when you think about where we are, if you just uh, compare it to this time last year, there's been a drastic change in our nation. I tend to believe that this so-called covert uh, invisible enemy was man-made. I tend to believe that it was man-made for a purpose. And the purpose is and was to destroy this nation. In addition, as kind of a sidebar, we can throw the rest of the world in, see what we can do about the destruction of them. Multitudes and millions of people in our, in our, our nation have succumbed to the fact that, uh, is this particular thing dangerous? Yes, it is dangerous. People die and have died from this, this uh, uh, pandemic. I accept that fact, and, and however, you also get to the point where you, you begin to question what the scientists are telling us. On one hand, they give us something that we can deal with. One hand, they, they give us something that we can verify and we can actually say, okay, that's true. On the other hand, what they gave us in this hand, they start to change. So you get to the point where you say, let's get to the truth. Give us the facts. Allow us to make our own decisions. Don't make decisions for us. We're not stupid. We're not backpedaling. We're quite capable of thinking. So just give us the facts. Allow us to digest the facts and decide what we want to do as a people. Now going back to this, this economic thing, as I said earlier, their, their desire and their objective is to crush capitalism. Well, what does that mean for us? That means that <clears throat> we no longer have the opportunity to make our own decisions. We no longer will have the opportunity to put forth a maximum effort, an individual effort, to see how far we can attain whatever it is that needs to be attained. That, that means that their objective is to eliminate the ownership of everything. That's socialism. That's communism. It belongs to the state. We own, you own nothing. They own it all. Now, does that sound kind of foreign and, and uh, uh, not rational? Think of communist China. Think of North Korea. Think of, of Cuba. Cuba is, is under the thumb of Castro now. Was it always that way? No. No, there was a time when Cuba was a, an individual functioning country. Same thing with Venezuela. Venezuela is not what it was 10, 12 years ago, I don't think. But communism and socialism have moved into various spots around the world. And wherever you find this, you find the people, the citizens, the families destroyed, and the people basically enslaved. Uh, call it anything you want to call it, but when you are not allowed to go forth and do whatever it is that you want to do to pursue freely, 
then there's something wrong with that. When someone tells you that, no, you can't do this or you can't do that, and they give you some kind of a reason that doesn't make any sense, there's something wrong with the whole concept. And that's where we are. Um, you will remember, I think some time ago, we were looking at, at what, uh, what I'll call the Communist Manifesto. Um, in, in, in June, June the 10th of 1963, the congressman named uh, Alfred, or Albert Herlong from Florida read into the, the congressional record 45 goals, 45 communist goals for America. Why would you want to introduce communist goals for America? Unless there was some kind of, of a, agenda or ulterior motive. Uh, we talked about some of these, I believe, but <clears throat> there are a couple of them that I want to share with you that uh, I was looking at last night. Um, do away with the, loyal, with the loyalty oath. Uh, resist any attempt to outlaw the Communist Party. Um, continue discrediting American culture by degrading all forms of artistic expression. Any Ameri an American communist cell was told, told to eliminate all good sculpture from parks, buildings, uh, and submit uh, shapeless, awkward, uh, meaningless forms. So why would you want to pull statues that represent our history down? Why would you want to spray paint things that are attributable to the history of our nation? I have to be honest with you, the more I read this stuff, the more aggravated I get. So I'm not going to belabor it too long. I don't need to stand here and act up. That's not good. <laughs> no, that would not be good. <laughs> uh, support any socialist movement to give centralized control over any part of the culture, education, social uh, agencies, welfare programs, mental attitude, clinics, etc. <clears throat> Infiltrate and gain control of big business. Turn America into a socialist police state. Enough said. It also speaks of the fact that uh, to <clears throat> gain and or uh, discredit one, if not both, of the political parties. I think they've done a fantastic job with the, so, with the Democratic Party. This is where we are, folks. Uh, recently I read an article, a small article, in, in, in some of the, the uh, magazines and periodicals I get. There's a place, <clears throat> and it was a very small article, I was surprised at that, but anyway. There's a, a community in California, I believe it's Los Angeles, but don't hold, hold, hold me to that. It is an Orthodox uh, Jewish community. They, uh, I think it's probably, it, it's not a very large community. Anyway, where are you going with this? Black Lives Matter created an assault on the synagogues, the cemetery, uh, some of the businesses, etc. So, what does that tell you? They're also anti-Semitic. These are the things that in our time we see 
and these things have come uh, personal, up close, in your face type of things. We don't know the the total uh, ramifications, but we heard that the senator from Kentucky, uh, Ron Paul, uh, Rand Paul, on his way home from uh, uh, the White House after the celebration of the Republican Convention, he, he all we saw was he was assaulted by a mob. Uh, that's all we know right now. To me, that's inexcusable. That is no no way at all except acceptable. Why should any citizen anywhere in our country have to be confronted by lawlessness, godlessness, anarchy, and chaos? Things are out of control, but they're capable of being controlled. The question is not if, the question is when. <clears throat> I want to share some things with you that uh, I have, have found in, in my studies. Sometimes I get to the point where I don't know how to put all this stuff together, but uh, bear with me, if you will. And, and I want to share this with you, especially because of the fact uh, the focus of this group is Black Lives Matter. Well, nothing can be farther from the truth. Let's, uh, uh, for example, in Genesis chapter 1, Let's take a look, if you will, uh, verses 24 to 31. This is the sixth day. Now, when nothing more than creations by the Almighty God. Moreover, <clears throat> the fertility of life comes from the blessing of the true God, our God, our sovereign God. So who's doing the creation here? God. What is he creating? He is creating everything. Everything. <clears throat> Why is he doing this? Because of divine design and the fact that this is a part of his sovereign will. You see, as we well know, our God being sovereign, he doesn't answer to anybody. There's no such thing as going to the, the board of directors. There is no board of directors. There's no such thing as shutting down for two weeks in August. There is no shutdown time. When God said, this is it, it is it. When God spoke the, the, the world into existence, it immediately came into existence. <coughs> so... This is the sovereign God that we serve. He doesn't answer to anybody. <clears throat> and I want us to go a little further with this, if you will, please. Um, verse 27. Human life was created in, in essence as the image of God. This image was imparted only to humans. Chapter 2, verse 7. Image, Hebrew word selam, S-E-L-E-M, image, is used figurative, figuratively here. For God does not have a human form. However, being uh, in God's image means that humans share through, though in, uh, imperfectly and finitely, in God's nature, that is, in his communicable attributes, which are life, personality, truth, wisdom, love, holiness, and justice. We are in the image of God. Imperfectly, yes. Finitely, yes. But we're still the Imago Dei. 
So don't try by any stretch of the imagination to create some type of humanistic organization based on socialism and communism, which are no, nothing short of, uh, of, of man's creation. Don't even try to, to, in any way, shape, or form, to compare that with what our sovereign God has created. As the body of Christ, the organism, not the organization, we must be fully aware of these things. I don't think this is really going to change between now and the time that the church is raptured. But I definitely believe that we need to be made aware of these things. If, if <clears throat> Someone has said, and I don't believe it, what you don't know won't hurt you. I don't believe that. What you don't know can kill you. What you don't know can kill you. So to say that, oh, what you don't know won't hurt you. Nothing can be farther from the truth. When you don't know something, you're, you're eager or unaware of it. It becomes dangerous to you, to us, to we as an individuals. It is to our advantage to be fully aware of the things that are going on around us. We don't necessarily have to like them, but we need to be fully aware of what's going on around us. That enables us from the, the aspect of being equipped then we know exactly what's going on. There's also another uh, thing I would like to share with you. There's a gentleman by the name of Curtis Bowers. Curtis has made two uh, what I consider fantastic videos. Uh, one is called uh, The Agenda and the other one is Agenda 2. Um, we'd like very much to order uh, those two and if in point of fact we can get together on a Friday night and watch them or if you want to once we uh, once we have them in our possession if you uh, want to share them family to family, that's fine. But these are things that we need to know. Those two organizations, the, the uh, World Economic Forum, uh, WE Forum, and uh, uh, Curtis Bowers' uh, Agenda 1 and 2. <clears throat> We're, we'll get those from uh, uh, Jan Markell's uh, Olive Tree Ministries, and we'll go ahead and order that. But uh, these are the things that, that, just so that you know, these are the things that, that kept us up very early this morning. I uh, I didn't bring, perhaps I will bring some next week, next Sunday. There, there, is more, there are more things that I would like to share with you, but I definitely wanted to share this with you. This is important. This, this enables us to be equipped and knowledgeable to the things that are coming down the pipe. <clears throat> These are the things that, that weigh very heavy on me. Uh, I know where we are. I know where we're going. I know where we've been. I just don't like to see how our nation is unraveling. Uh, we look at our nation through the lens of a biblical worldview. Multitudes of people don't even know what that is, much less being aware of it. What does that mean? That means instead of looking where we are from the horizontal point of view, we look at it vertically. We look at it as a means of the grace and the mercy and, and the blessings and the provisions of our sovereign God. 
and we look at our world and we understand and realize that <clears throat> when the Christ was speaking to the apostles in Matthew 24 and he said to them the birth pains will come they will, will intensify when you see these things when you see these things know that our salvation draws nigh. We are a lot closer today than we were at this time last week to the rapture of the church. There are there is a, a Greek word um, taco, not tacos, not tacos, taco. We 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 get the word tachometer from that. And the word itself means revolutions per minute. When the tachometer starts to rise, the revelations increase. When you get so far, there's a red line. And when you get to the red line, that tells you that you're getting in a dangerous area. You're getting more revolutions per minute than you really need. However, we're redlining. That's where we are. Things are revving up, whether we like it or not. We need to be made aware of that. This is why things are transpiring the way that they are. We understand and realize our time is short. The rapture could occur in the midst of our service this morning. But we still have loved ones and family members and those that continuously are on our hearts and our minds that don't know what we know, and that's the relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Do we, do we have work to do? Yes. To pray and to witness. To pray and to share our faith. To pray and do not hesitate to pray for, with if necessary, for those in and around us, for our families, our loved ones, our family members, for the leadership of our nation, for our first responders, all of them, for, for people that we encounter. Uh, what do you mean encounter? We don't know whose shoulders we brushed in the, in the process of, of what we go through in a 24-hour day. We, we, we can't see faces now, so we don't know if people are frowning, smiling. We don't know what they're doing. But these are the people that we encounter on a regular basis. Pray for them. Keep them in continuous prayer. Prayer and witness. Don't hesitate to share your faith. You see someone that looks like they're having a hard day, express the fact, ask them, you having a hard day? Can I pray for you? Can we pray for you? Can we put you on our prayer list to church? Uh, is there anything that we can do to say or whatever might help you in today? You, you pick up the phone and there's somebody on the opposite end of the phone and you can tell from the sound of their voice and they're being ripped and torn. Uh, let the smile be heard in your voice. You can do that. Let the smile be heard in your voice, simply by the way you communicate uh, what you're saying. <clears throat> There's so much I wanted to share with you this morning, but I think right now, for this time, these are the essentials. There are other passages of scripture that, uh, well, I stopped after 10, and that was at 3 o'clock this morning, so that's enough already. Go to bed. Well, what was that, 3 o'clock this morning? Mm -hmm. yeah. anyway. So that's where we are, but um, recognize where we are. And this is where we are. We have nothing to fear. Fear, worry, 
anxiety. These are mental attitude sins. We don't have anything to fear. We don't have anything to fear. Our God is with us. He said, I will never forsake you nor leave you. Uh, we have nothing to worry about. Um, this is the operation, man. Right here. Believe his instructions before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E. This is the instruction, man. All we have to do is keep our faces in the book. Bow our heads in prayer. Turn off the electronics and pray together. Sit around the table and break bread together. Get to know what it's like to know one another. I have been told that there are numerous numbers of people <clears throat> accepting Christ because of this covert activity. And to me it is a covert activity, but I'm not going there. Uh, um, I think this has done a phenomenal, phenomenal job of destroying our educational system. I think our, our youngsters have been deprived of desperately needed education. Is this going to come back? Will there be an opportunity to, to recuperate, as it were, or come back to the level of educational uh, enlightenment that we were? I have no idea. But I don't think that what has been lost is going to be in any position to be recovered. I think too much water has gone under the bridge. And I think it was deliberate. Because I think this, this objective, by doing this, it continues to eradicate the history of our nation. And when you don't know the history of your nation, you tend to repeat the, the history, and that's to your detriment. And that's where we are. We even heard recently that somewhere in the Northwest or somewhere in that area, that a group of people got together and started burning Bibles. Well, to those individuals, I would like to say this is the inerrant Word of God. Right. This is the immutable of Word of God. You will never destroy the Word of God, no matter how much you try. Mm -hmm. Adolf Hitler tried it. He lost it. Joseph Stalin tried it. He lost it. There are other individuals around the globe that have tried to destroy the inerrant, immutable Word of God. And how many of them have succeeded? Zero. You will not destroy God's church. You will not destroy God's Word. Mm -hmm. uh, let's bow together, shall we? Father, it is by your grace and your mercy and it is because of who and what you are that we are here this morning. <clears throat> we thank you for your inerrant word of truth. We thank you for the fact that, that you have provided for us everything. That we will never ever need everything. That we will ever need in this life. It is you, Father, who controls human history. It is you that we ask to order our steps. Keep us focused, if you will, Father, on who and what you are. Enable us to understand and realize and be continuously mindful of the fact you are the sovereign God that we serve. For all of this, Father, we thank you that this portion of your word might be a source of blessing, a source of challenge, a source that would enable us to grow in grace and in the full knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he might be honored and glorified. And all of us together said, Amen. Amen.